What's going on, children of Israel? Uh, let me see this cover on. I don't know if this cover is on or not. But as um, long as y'all can hear my voice, all is well. As long as y'all can hear my voice, all is well. This is a listening video, not a visual video. Okay. Uh, let's start with uh, Luke. There we go. Y'all can see me a little bit. I see that. Okay. Yeah. Let's start with Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 35. And I um, hope you're having a blessed morning, evening, or afternoon. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 35. And it says, uh, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And this is for all of us, by the way. All right. All right. This this Holy Ghost is for all of us. This is this is the promise of the Father to those that believe in Him, those that are waiting and watching for Him, looking for Him. All right. All right. This is His gift to you and me. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost, God Almighty. That's who the Holy Ghost is. God Almighty. We call him Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Holy Ghost shall come unto thee, and the power of the highest, that's the Almighty, shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. That's a lot in there, wouldn't it? <laughs> the Son of God. Uh, that holy thing. You catch that? That holy thing. That's going to be the title of this video. A God thing. A God thing. This is a God thing. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Okay? The Holy Ghost. Okay? The Son of God. That's all in one. That's all in one. That's the same as, uh, let's get that from the Old Testament. Prophecy. Myself and the mighty great lion always go here. Y'all know where I'm going. Those of you who watch our videos, Isaiah 9, 6. That's what we just read. Check it out. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. We know... That's what we just read in Luke 1. And the government, the kingdom of God, your life, my life, right? Uh, this is the mind of Christ, the government, the kingdom of God. And the government should be upon his shoulder, right? All our cares, all our living. And his name shall be called, look what his name is, Wonderful. Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Look at all that in there. And that's one. That's a God thing. This is a God thing. This Bible is a God thing. Right? Salvation is a God thing. Mercy is a God thing. Forgiveness is a God thing. Salvation is a God thing. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. And this is his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. His judgment and justice. Okay? And righteousness. Right? Faith, godliness, fruits of the Spirit. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This is a God thing. He's going to tell us over and over and over, this, this, this is a God thing. It's over our heads, y'all. It's over our head. The Lord sent his word, right? Our son of God, for the scriptures, the Bible, the Lord sent his word. 
Jesus into Jacob and it lighted upon Israel, his chosen, his elect, the predestined people. All right? All right? The rod of his inheritance. That's his, his inheritance. He established us. This, this, that's plain. These people are established as his, his chosen people. Now let's get this. Let's get this. Uh, uh, since we're in Isaiah, let's go up a few books. You know I'm setting it up. Isaiah 33, 5 and 6. This is what he did. With all that we just read. Here's what he did. Isaiah 33, 5 and 6. The Lord is exalted. That's your Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore God has highly exalted him, giving him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. Philippians 2, verse 9 through 11. Okay, that's what this is. The Lord is exalted, Jesus Christ. For he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion. That's what we read. That's your Isaiah 6, 9 through uh, 8. We just read it. It, it. He sent his word to Jacob. And it lighted upon Israel. That's Zion. That's their house. The Lord dwelleth in Zion with the children of Israel. Forever. Just read Psalms 132, verse 8 through 18. Okay. Uh, Numbers 35, 34, 35. Okay. Uh, he filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. That's what we're supposed to have right there. Judgment and righteousness. We call it today wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay. Uh, verse 6. It tells us right here. The next, very next verse. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Boom. Without this, you are blind. Right? You are blind. Our people are blind without God's wisdom, without God's knowledge, without God's understanding. We don't have stability. This will be this is our stability of the times, the strength of our salvation. The fear of God. The fear of the Lord of hosts is his treasure. You got to have that in this world of darkness. Because this whole world, understand this, this is the light. We just read God sends his light to Jacob. It lighted upon Israel. Everything else is darkness. You're born into the darkness. Everybody's in the darkness. Let's, let's get that real quick. Revelations. I'm going to be playing in this video. This is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings. Uh... But you know the word of God to do that. First John 5, 19. It'll make you or it'll break you. First John 5, 19. It says, uh, and we know that we are of God. And the whole world, look at that, lieth in wickedness. They in the devil. Now, God is a spirit. They that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth, right? So it says, and we know that we are of God. We are in the spirit. We are in the Holy Ghost. We are in the Holy Ghost, same as we read about Mary. Holy Ghost will come upon thee, overpower thee. You know, holy thing that should be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. That's his gift. That Son of God is our wisdom, our knowledge, our understanding. He separates us from the darkness. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. The flesh is wickedness. They already had a mark of the beast. The whole world already bears the image of the beast. Y'all understanding this? They already bear the image of the beast. It's called the flesh. And the devil will be coming soon to claim you. 
because you're not in the spirit. You you not. I'm hey, I'm just reading the scriptures. He's just coming to put his name on you, right? Just like we supposed to have Jesus' name in our foreheads. The devil's coming to put his name in your forehead. Okay, to claim his, well, that basically means to claim you, and you you supposed to claim him as your father, as your as your governor. Now you've already serving him. You're doing it. Some of you willingly, purposely, with understanding, and, and the rest of you is just doing it ignorantly. You know. Nevertheless, you're of the wicked one. You're of the flesh. Watch this, Romans 8, 7, Romans 8, 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. You're not subject to God. Neither indeed can be. You cannot be subject to God in the, in the flesh. Let's keep reading. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh. This is us of the spirit, born of that holy thing. We accepted his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God, that holy thing, dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the holy thing or the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you're none of his. If you are not of Jesus Christ, Born of the holy thing, the Holy Ghost, right? The God of Israel, Isaiah 9, 6. The wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. You are none of his. You're none of his. I came to discover that uh, the book of Proverbs, let's go there. Proverbs deals with the wisdom. Now, I understand. That's, to me, that's... Psalms and Proverbs is like the heart of the Bible, man. Psalms and Proverbs. Proverbs 3. It's really that whole chapter, though. Proverbs 3 says it all, man. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart, let thy heart keep my commandments. Oh, yeah, let's deal with this. He said, let, my heart, let thy heart keep my commandments. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, the whole... Chapter is the bang, man. That's the bang, okay? Uh, before I even finish Proverbs 3, since I saw that word heart, it, it, <laughs> that said it all. Here's another confirmation. This Bible is, is a God thing, man. It's all powerful. Watch this. Jeremiah 17. So y'all already know where I'm going. When I say Jeremiah 17, yo. And I'm dealing with the heart. Y'all automatically know where I'm going. Uh, to prove that everybody's in the wicked. That I'm not making this up. This is a God thing. man. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful. Above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? Uh, I, the Lord... Let me put some color in that. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. He, the Lord alone tries this. He tries our heart. That's what this, in order to have, uh, uh, to be perfectly one in Christ Jesus, he has to try your heart. There's no way around this. Most people are afraid of this. This is called the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ. The heart is deceitful. Y'all get, get that? Did y'all hear that? It's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. When we read in 1 John 5, 19, the whole world lies in the wicked one. This is the proof. Your heart is the proof. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. He, he goes deep into the heart, man. He tries the perimeters of the heart, the intents and the thoughts. The Lord searches all of that. He knows all of that. He knows what's going on. Right. And he ain't no Santa Claus. 
You know, if you've been naughty or nice. See, that's mock. See, this world mocks. They mocks. Even to give to every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his thoughts or doings. That's what this is all about. Huh? Your life is a God thing. He created you. You've been independently doing your thing, doing this and doing that. Not even considering that you are sinning against God. The things you do in the dark will come to the light. Huh? Yeah, so this is a God thing. This is a God thing. Y'all with me so far? Uh, trying to set it up where I want to go. Now, let's go back to Proverbs 3. Because that's... I don't even think we might not even finish Proverbs 3 today. It's so deep. Proverbs 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart... He's telling us about this heart, man. That's deceitful, desperately weak. Now... If we obey him, let's let's get there. Okay. Every time I get that Proverb 3 1, I get a fresh revelation. Yeah, God loves us so much. He gives us a new heart, man. Jeremiah 24 and 7. He loves us so much. This is what he said he gonna do for us. And I will give them one heart. A heart. I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord. And that they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. This this is his love for us. This is what he said he gonna do. And I will give them a heart to know me. Right? The only way for us to know God is with this this heart he's promised, huh? To know me that I am the Lord. And that they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return. So that means that's the twelve tribes. Right? They was the only one with him. Unto me with their whole heart. And he he says whole heart. Not fifty percent. Not seventy, not eighty, not ninety, not ninety-nine, but the whole heart. Alright. Jeremiah, this time let's go to Jeremiah thirty two. Says it a little differently but nevertheless it is the word of god uh uh jeremiah let's get the one in jeremiah what i say 32 yeah jeremiah 32 Verse 37, let's get that one. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries where I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, Zion, Jerusalem, and I will cause them to dwell safely. This is salvation, y'all. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them, here it is, that one heart, look, I will give them one heart. This is what we should have been asking for in the first place. This heart carries the wisdom, knowledge, understanding of God, and the fear of God. That's our treasure. The fear of God, our treasure. When Jesus Christ was exalted, he was able to disperse this to us. It's called the Holy Ghost. We, that's, we started out reading that. Jesus Christ calls this the promise of God. Tell us to wait on the promise of God. That's, that's your Acts chapter 1. That whole chapter on down. The promise of the Holy Ghost, man. All right? And one way, this one heart is one way. Well, that's what Jesus said. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. John 14, 6 and 7. That's how we know he's that. He is this one heart. And he says he's the light. Follow me. Right? Deny yourself. Luke 9, 23, take up your cross, follow me. Cross representing what? Death to the flesh, which is the, the image of the beast, the Antichrist, the flesh. All right? 
and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and their children. That's for our children too. Because they the image of the beast. The school system has already corrupted them, y'all. Y'all know that. This whole world is antichrist. Children rise up against their godly parents. You know, uh, Timothy, was it Second Timothy? It said perilous times, uh, people would be unthankful, ungodly, unholy. Children would be rebellious against their parents. Uh, people lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. The beast system, we couldn't protect them because they have to do this with their own will and heart. Because we read in Romans eight seventeen that uh, the flesh is hostile to God. It's not subject to God's law. So we really could do our best to be an example to our children. But the school systems and the uh, technology with the cell phones and the videos, the music videos, this whole world is corrupt. So therefore our children are corrupt because of this. And they are antichrist. Your husband is antichrist. Your wife is antichrist. Maybe you yourself right now watching this video, currently antichrist. You are currently an antichrist. Because you don't live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You don't believe in the holy thing. You take that this is a God thing. Okay, your whole life is a God thing. Your creation is a God thing. The breath you breathe is a God thing. And their children after them. Okay, and we saw this in Genesis 8, 21. Genesis 8, 21. Let's get that. Genesis. We, we got a little time. Genesis 8, 21. Uh, put a little color in it and it says and the Lord smelled a sweet savior and the Lord said in his heart I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake for here check this out for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth yeah that's why I say your children, they uh, they are bitten by the beast. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. That's with the flood. You know, next time it's going to be fire. He's going to destroy the world with fire, not water. But nevertheless, he, he declared that the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Our children are evil. They live in a demonic world antichrist world right so he says i'm gonna give you this heart so you can know me one heart one way so you know the gospel has to be one you know the faith has to be one one lord one faith one baptism ephesians 4 5 but the devil sends all this confusion and and uh falsehood the bible said uh through thy precepts I get understanding, right? In uh, Psalms 119, through his precepts, we get understanding. It says we hate every false way. We're supposed to hate every false way, every way that's not of Jesus Christ, that's not of the truth. We're supposed to hate every false way. And that means we can't add or take away from God's word. We're commanded not to add nor take away. Now we see that Jesus is exalted. We read, we saw that in Isaiah 33, verse 5. Right? Zion. That was his whole mission. That was his whole work. So let's go to Proverbs. Even though we didn't finish Proverbs 3. Y'all wanna go back to Proverbs 3 or what? I'm not, I'm, it's just too much word, man. I mean, I try not to stick in. I'm trying to rightly divide. Uh, so I get a little bit here and get a little bit there. Yeah, let's get back to Proverbs 3. Let's get back to Proverbs 3. And every time I hit that first verse, man, my son, forget not my law, but 
Let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Y'all hear that? This is what Jesus has given us. Mercy and truth. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tables of thy heart. See that? With this new heart, that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. So shalt thou find favor. Favor is life. Salvation. And good understanding. That's what we do. That's what we need, favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. You're going to need this wisdom when you're dealing with men. I've been over my, the years. I've been caught. I've been caught up in situations. man. I've been righteous to I'm walking with the Lord. Police had me several times. I've been in handcuffs, handcuffs uh, for teaching and, you know, just being a witness for Jesus Christ and God's wisdom always has delivered me. Always has delivered me. His wisdom, his knowledge and understanding and knowing how to deal with, with man. What we just said, the police or uh, uh, regular citizens, you know, because they, they try to get you jammed up too. And I'm not talking about Submitting and bowing down to them. I'm just talking about wisdom confounding them. Confounding them. You can make a man drop a gun that's pointing a gun to your head. Speaking the words of God. Life to that man. You can make him drop that gun. Your words are more powerful than his gun. You just got to have the, the wisdom and, and uh, the knowledge and understanding of what, you, what you're doing. Uh, oh, let's finish this. Let's finish this. Because I want to go somewhere else. But it's just too much meat here. Trust in the Lord. Here it is. Y'all. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own. And then when we say all the heart, we talking about that holy thing that should be born of thee. When you talking about your old heart, Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked we ain't talking about that one we ain't talking about the flesh that's the flesh y'all understand trust in the lord this is the new heart here the holy thing which is called jesus christ it's called the son of god okay you gotta be baptized in his name romans chapter six for remission of sins filled with this holy thing the holy ghost okay you have to be repent and be baptized right to receive salvation to receive the fear of God that will be your treasure. So we can return to him with what? Our whole heart. Look at what this is. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Your whole heart. That's the only way you're going to make it through this world of darkness. The habitation of cruelty. And lean not unto thy own. Look, understanding. Don't have your own understanding. That's what the... Mosaic law, Hebrew Israelites are doing. They're leaning by their own understanding. So they don't have the holy thing. They don't have the son of God. They don't have the new heart. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Jesus Christ. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Tells in Hebrews 12, 2. And he shall direct thy paths. The Lord is my shepherd, shall I want. Making me to lie down in green pastures, leading me beside the still waters. Huh? He leading me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Quit being wise. Become nothing. Become a nobody. Become an empty vessel where the Lord can fill you with his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. The world is evil. Your life is evil. The Lord said everything about you is evil. Everything about you because of the flesh, because of corruption. You're born in sin, shaping into iniquity. It shall be held to thy navel and merle to thy bones. When we do this, obey the Lord, trust in him with all our heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. 
Right? Right? But you got to give up you. You got to turn you in. You, you, you think you something. The Bible said when a man thinks if he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. That's it right there. When a man thinks himself to be something, when he is the police, let's give an example, police. I've been jammed. I was jammed up the other day. The police come. They think they, you know what? I, my forehead was strong against their forehead. You understand? My forehead was strong against their forehead. I ain't bow down. Stood my ground. And trusted in God. And you know what? I was full of joy. And even dealing with these dudes. They had me in handcuffs. You know? But I already knew. I got this victory. See, they just come. You know, you want, we a lamb. So we don't come swinging on them. You know, they brutus. They brute beasts. You know what I'm saying? And I was trying to win the dudes. So the dudes, because, you know, they they, they always more than one. They had you surrounded. I'm going to show you. It's it's in the word. I was after the dudes. So, and they knew who I was. They knew who I was by the words I was speaking. And they had me. I was supposed to go to jail. I could have went to jail. But in, if I was in the flesh, though, if I was under their law, if I was under the law of sin and death, I would have went to jail. That's what I'm telling you. They couldn't touch me because I'm a heavenly citizen. I belong to the kingdom of God. But the Lord let me go. You got to be tested. You got to go through fires. I done did this so much. This, this, this is nothing for me. I done been through it so many times. You understand? But that was just another day. But that just adds to your uh, reward. That just adds to your reward when you go through fires for his name's sake. Remember in, uh, that scripture in uh, Revelation said, Satan shall cast some of you. Well, that's another video. That's another video. Because uh, I don't want to scare nobody. But that's another video. Uh, check this out. Happy is the man that find. Oh, y'all, I got to show y'all. My fault, y'all. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. There it is. Wisdom. And the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. And the gain thereof of fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And all things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. God's wisdom. Ain't that deep? Nothing you can desire can be compared to God's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Length of days are in her right hand and in her left hand riches, honor. Her ways are of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. Look what she becomes. Look what this wisdom becomes. She is a tree of life to them that laid hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom. Here it is, y'all. Pay attention to this. See, that's why our children and them are, are, are in such danger. Husband, wives, mother, father. Those born into this world. Because they don't have God's wisdom, knowledge. I said they don't have the holy thing to guide them. They don't have that heavenly light in this world of darkness. Therefore, they can dig their hole deeper. And that's what they do. That's what the flesh does. It digs a deeper and deeper hole for itself. Okay. Uh, running from the voice of God. Okay. The Lord by wisdom have founded the earth. That's why you need it. You can't live in it. You, you, in order to govern yourself through this world of snares. Because you got the beast. Who walk about looking to whom he may devour. Then don't the Bible tell us the devil does that? He walk about seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for them that don't have the wisdom. Well, he he wants them that have the wisdom too. But he can't touch them. They got their hedge around them. That hedge is that, that fear of God. Well, we read Isaiah 33, 5 and 6. They got that wisdom, knowledge, understanding. 
the stability of the time. They got the fear of God to protect him. They are protected. They got that hedge, that covering. And the wicked one can't get to us. He cannot get to us. Handcuffs don't mean they got you. They want you in their pit. They want you locked up. They want you in the prison. Don't think because they put you in handcuffs. If some of y'all down the line get in handcuffs, don't panic. Don't panic. That's the, just the first thing they do. They try to uh, uh, interrogate you. They try to intimidate you. They want you to say something uh, uh, to incriminate you. So you. That's why you need the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That you way above these cats. You way smarter than them. They want you to incriminate yourself. Ain't that a lot of people say that's why they got Bill Cosby. So I wasn't really paying attention to that Bill Cosby thing. They say because he something he said. And that's how the wicked want to get you. But if you full of the words of God. Out of the, out of the uh, mouth. Comes from the heart, right? Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. It's your righteousness. It's your salvation. It's your godliness. It's your holiness that's going to deliver you. Because the flesh is crucified. And if you in the flesh, you're trying to save your own life. you trying to do this thing yourself when this is a God thing. I told you, you were deep, you're going to dig your hole deeper. If you in the flesh and you're not living after the wisdom, knowledge, and the light of God, you're going to dig your hole deeper, thinking that you're wiser than God. Proverbs told us, lean not to our own understanding. Don't have our own wisdom. Proverbs 3, we just read it a little minute ago. Right at the top here. We're still in Proverbs 3. All right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your soul. Lean not to your own understanding. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding, he had established the heavens. You need understanding of the heavens and the earth. You need understanding of the heavens and the earth. Let me set this down for a second. It's a little hot in here. I got to unzip my jacket. You need understanding of the heavens and the earth. Okay. You need understanding of the heavens and the earth. That's the scriptures. That's the holy thing. He's the understanding of the heavens and the earth. Because he's the God of the heavens and the earth. Look at verse 20. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. And the dew is the holy thing. Let's get that. The dew... Is the is the holy thing? You know that Proverbs, uh, was it sixteen? Uh, the dew is the holy thing, the holy one. Uh, well, yeah, well, we'll do this. Proverbs sixteen six by mercy and truth. That's the scriptures. That's the, right. Iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord. Do men depart from evil? By the fear of the Lord, do men depart from evil? Right? Uh, by truth and mercy, iniquity is purged. That's what we need, right? Truth and mercy. Right? Let's scroll on down a little bit more. Verse 12. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness. For the throne is established by righteousness. You need the Lord's righteousness. That's the holy thing that is given to us. It's called the Lord, our righteousness. Right? The holy thing. Let's go on down a little bit more. Right here, verse 15. In the light of the king's continence is life. Right? And his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. He's the latter rain. His favor is as the cloud of the latter rain. The king's continence. That's what, when you see the face of Jesus Christ uh, in the scriptures, his face is righteousness. That is you acknowledging God's righteousness as your salvation. You have to acknowledge his righteousness as your salvation. That's what you do when you confess 
That's that Romans 10, 9. Let's get that real quick. Romans 10, 9. Here it is. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart. There's that heart. Right? That God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. There it is. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You got to believe on his righteousness. That's the holy thing. The God thing. Right? He is righteousness. Right? Right? Uh, and, and, and admitting that your wickedness, you you are wicked, he is righteous, right? And then uh, he tests us the heart, right? Let's get that. Uh, I know I got to bring it in. Time is flying. I might have to do extra parts to this, y'all. I may have to do extra parts to this because there's a whole lot more in this. Uh, let's uh, 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 Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs two. Proverbs two. No, no, no. Seventeen, verse two. Proverbs seventeen, two. A wise servant shall have rule over a son that causes shame, and he shall have part of the inheritance among the brother. Verse three. The finding pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. There it is. That's really the, the theme of this. Uh, all this I've said thus far was to set all this up. For the Lord trieth the hearts. The Lord trieth the hearts. Now we're talking about righteousness. But in order for you to have God's righteousness... He's got to try your heart. So you got to go. So we have to be tried. The faith has to be tried. Let's get a. First Peter one. Seven. I'm trying to bring in some meat for this video ends. First Peter one seven. Try to bring in some meat. And it says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold, see, we got to be purified, that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory of the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's trying to bring it out, man. He's trying to bring it out of us. Uh, and it's going to, it takes work on your behalf and the Holy Ghost's behalf. So you got to yield to the Holy Spirit. You have to yield to the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Lord exalted our nation. So I don't think I will. Yeah, let me go there. Proverbs. Let's go back to Proverbs. We're kind of being a proverb kind of day, ain't it? Proverbs 14 and 35. If we don't get it all in on part one and two, we're going to get it. We're going to do extra parts because there's a... It, it's a lot more to this. It's going to get deep. Proverbs 14, 34. Righteousness. Here it is. Exalted for nation. This is the Lord's right. The holy thing. This is how you become exalted. But sin is a reproach to any people. If you got sin, that's a reproach. Even to the kingdom of heaven. Right? Verse 35. The king's favor is toward a wise servant. So who... A wise servant. But his wrath is against him that causes shame. The favor goes to the wise servant. Okay. The wise servant. He's the one that gets all the love. Right. Let me show you that. Proverbs 11. And verse 18. Proverbs 11, 18. The wicked worketh a deceitful work. But to him that show of righteousness shall be a sure reward. So the righteous gets the reward. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his death. Okay? Let's go to the last verse for time's sake. Watch this. 
Uh, all of this is meat, but uh, we want verse 30. Let's go to verse 30 here. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. See that? That's the reward. He gets the reward. And he that win of souls is wise. Look at that, y'all. Now we're getting to where your heart is being tried. He that win of souls is wise. Are you a soul winner? Are you in the edges and the highways? He that win of souls is wise. We reading it. That's the one that's going to get the favor of God. Uh, Proverbs 10, 21. Let's go there real quick. Proverbs 10, 21. Let me hurry up. I, I believe this camera's going to run out soon. Proverbs 10, 21. And it says, uh, The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. They don't have the wisdom. So you're not wise if you're not winning souls. Look what the righteous do. The lips of the righteous feed many. But the fools die for want of wisdom. Okay? Uh, uh, Proverbs now, let's go to uh, Proverbs 16. Let's go back over there. Proverbs 16. I think we did it, didn't we? And uh, Proverbs 16. Let's go. Let's revisit it. Let's revisit it. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, do men depart from evil. Let's go to verse 12. Do you have the fear of the Lord? Have you departed from evil? Have you started witnessing in the hedges and the highways? That means everywhere. So you're going to have to get persecuted, man. If you're not getting persecuted, brothers and sisters, uh, something's wrong. Okay, something's wrong. Verse 12. It is an abomination on kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Okay? Righteousness. And uh, Jesus said, Blessed are the day that are persecuted for righteousness sake. Right? In Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness. Let's go to Proverbs 14, 9. Proverbs 14, 9. We might have been there. Let's go one more time if we did. Proverbs 14, 9. Proverbs 14, 9 said, Fools make mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Okay? The righteous get the favor. All right? Uh, Proverbs 22, now. Let's get that real quick. Proverbs 22 and 9. Put some color in it. Proverbs 22, 9 said, but he that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he that giveth his bread to the poor. And we know that the bread is the scriptures. Look at this. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed. And that's toward the scriptures. You see the scriptures as a great spoil. Right? Jesus prayed, Father, give us this day our daily bread. Referring to the scriptures. For he giveth his bread to the poor. This is the wise that feed the poor and the needy of God's people. All right? He giveth his bread to the poor. Okay. Uh, now let's go to uh, Proverbs 23. Right next door. Proverbs 23. Let's start with verse 10. Verse 10. Proverbs 23, 10 says, Remove not the old landmark, Enter not into the fields of the fatherless, right? For their Redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee, right? Uh, apply thy heart to instruction. Y'all seeing this? Apply thy heart, put some color in that, to instruction, which is the scriptures, right? That's for wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Thy ears and to the words of knowledge, Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, thou shalt deliver his soul from hell. My son, if thine heart be wise, thy heart shall rejoice, even mine. This is what we want. We want the father's heart to rejoice, right? He said, if my son, if thine heart, he's after that heart, right? 
that heart, which is Jesus, that holy thing inside of you. That's the gift of God, right? And Jesus says, follow me. So you got to be walking in the light as he is in the light. So the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness, right? First John 1, right? Uh, verse, what is that, 6 and 7? Uh, 5 through 7. If thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice. We want God's heart to rejoice, even mine. And remember, he that winneth souls is wise. So this is telling us, this is how you make God's heart rejoice. Winning souls for his name's sake, right? That's a tree of life that leads you to a tree of life, right? Proverbs eleven thirty. Yea, my reign shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. His scriptures. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. That's what he brought us with judgment to Zion. Isaiah thirty three five and six. Fear of God is our treasure, that we depart from evil, the flesh life, our own understanding, the habitation of darkness, right? For surely there is an end, right, y'all? All these sinners and Mosaic law dudes, how come y'all don't consider, surely there's an end. Surely there's an end, right? For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thy heart in the way. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Hearken unto thy father that begot thee, and despise not the law of thy mother when she is old. Check this out. By the truth. Oh, we great get with it now. Check this out, y'all. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Buy the truth.